Another very big crowd here at the Adelaide Oval for this clash between Australia and Pakistan in the World Series Cup. Australia on seven points and Pakistan on three. And for Pakistan to have a chance of making the finals, they must beat Australia today. That points table has West Indies skating away in the lead and the other two teams fighting it out for the bid to see which one will go in alongside them in the best of three finals. The players out today in a tragedy for Australia in that Rodney Marsh is injured and Geoffrey Lawson has a back problem. They both go out, but a good chance for young Dean Jones, a young cricketer for whom I have a lot of time. Tom Hogan comes in as well. And for the Pakistanis, Tahir Nakash goes out and Mohsen Khan is in. Conditions very good at the Adelaide Oval, a beautiful day. Gusty breeze might have been the only thing that would cause problems for the players and a crowd expected of around about 26, 27,000 people. We pick up play now in the third over. No wicket for two, Rashid Khan is coming into bowl to Kepler Vessels. Your commentators, Ian Chappell and Frank Tyson. Yeah. Ejaz, at third man, makes a good save there. Two to Vessels and Australia none for four after three overs. Shot there from Steve Smith, picking up the short delivery, and crunching it away over square leg. Just what the doctor ordered and what the crowd want. Because Australia are off to a fairly sluggish start, and they can't afford to let the overs tick by without picking up the runs. They really have to look for runs more than they are doing at the moment, and uh, Smith very quick to pick up on that uh, shorter delivery. shot from Smith picks the gap nicely and it's only a short boundary out there the second boundary this morning and both of them going to Steve Smith he's really having to put up with a pretty ordinary attack I'd be very happy with the way things are going oh and that one fumbled and thrown away down further towards the boundary See up there, Kepler Vessels has faced 31 balls for his five. That's pretty slow. Well, that's a better shot. Two extra cover there. That's a wide ball outside off stump, and Vessels smashing it away. Well, that's the one place he's going to have no trouble hitting the ball. He's in position for that shot prior to the ball leaving the bowler's hand. Oh, good shot. That might be six. Way down towards square leg. And into the fence down there, so only four. But must be picked up there by Steve Smith, Australian over the pretty That uh, shout out there came, I think, from Abdul Qadir. For one moment, thought uh, he might have been through Steve Smith's defence. Man out at the point, Madassa. As he's round a little straighter than a squarish point, is uh, more a, a deep cover. And a gusty breeze today for Kadir to bowl into. And uh, he just hasn't quite got his length. Shot and dropped out at mid-wicket. That was hit with tremendous power, that. Madassa has a shortish delivery. Smith was in perfect position and hit it to the right of Javed Miandad, who couldn't hold on to this hot chance. Could be Vise. This is going for the sweep. Still got a touch to it. Umpire Peter McConnell. Just saying there, well, the question was asked by the bowler whether Kepler Vessels laid a bat on it. Getting through the pads of Barry. Okay. Smith's looking for two, but 
He's going to go. Oh, that was a very good piece of running there from Steve Smith. That ball was almost in the outfielder's hands there. Twenty-six overs remaining for the Australians. So it's essential that one of these two players out there now goes on and gets a big score. Spin in that one. E Jazz, the off spinner. I don't think we could have seen him turn a ball like that. So far this tour. In fact, the last boundary scored 12 overs ago by the Australians. Oh, yeah! Must be close. Depends if Ejaz had slipped in the top spinner there. And this is what happens when you peg down a little bit. Frustration keeping into the Australians' play. Smith hit in line, but the fact that he was well forward with that front pad would have thrown the doubt into the umpire's mind. <laughs> No doubt about that one, giving himself room for the stroke. And Steve Smith has gone. Bowled by Ejaz. He's bowled an interesting over so far. The first ball spun a mile. Then an appeal for LBW and then bowling Steve Smith. And a good bowling change by Jarvid. Taking Kadir off and bringing Ejaz on. And as Richie Benno mentioned, a good over. And which indicates that there's plenty of spin out there. So Australia losing their first wicket down with 70 runs on the board, nearly at the halfway mark. Each has to Vessels. Swept in the air and picking the gap to bring up Vessels' second boundary. Vessels showing a lot of aggression, but he's hitting the ball in the air quite a bit in the last couple of overs. Rather fortunate to just avoid Jarvid on that occasion. It's again, Vessels going over the top. As in Raja out of deep mid wicket. Mosin, in fact, at mid-wicket. And that brings up the 100 for Australia. And the 54 triple vessels. The 31st over. This is 50, which is 5. It's 1 for 99 for the scoreboard. And the vessels patient 50. That's a fine straight drive from Greg Ritchie. He's hit another seagull. And the Seagull is in a bit of strife there. Greg Ritchie picks up two runs. It's one for 101. Well, the Seagull is OK, a little stunned, I would say. He's uh, not moving too well, not able to get off the ground. A few of his mates come back to check and see if he's OK. He's not moving too well yet. chase could easily pick up four here and Vessels goes back for the fourth good running and the crowd coming live here at the Adelaide Oval as the Australians push off the 32nd over it's a sweeping find but hold of that nicely Away safely. Nadasa is the man at mid wicket. And the seagull is away. He's uh, shaken off the effects of that blow from Greg Ritchie and quite wisely decided to get the hell out of the Adelaide Oval. Much, must be much safer places than that. He's gone out into the gardens out, uh, out the side. I think you'll be a lot safer out there. Wrongen. Vessels picks that. And he gets just enough timing 
to take it into the boundary. So Australia starting to get on top of this spin attack. Move along to 114. First 95 deliveries, hit four boundaries. 26 runs scored in the last four overs by Kepler Vessels. Oh, and he's got him. Clean bowled him. Kepler Vessels hitting over the top of a well-flighted Yorker. And Ejaz has picked up his second wicket. He has a fine piece of bowling. He's prepared to throw the ball up. And ties Kepler Vessels down a fraction. Drifted in and spun away as he hit across the line of flight. And that's the end for Kepler Vessels. A bad time to get out when you've occupied the crease for 33 overs. Out for 61. And it's two for 115. And off the bottom of the bat, away past first slip. Richie running very hard. And he should get back for the fourth. Four all run. Greg Ritchie faces Ejaz. Then out of deep square, but it's short of him. Epicardia. Runs have come from this over so far. He's lofted away. The batsmen now are really going for their strokes as they have to. It's an interesting tussle this on the wicket that's showing that it's a little bit receptive to spin. And it spun right the way back then. And uh, Richie going for the square cut became the second victim of that sort of a stroke. Steve Smith was the first. Good delivery, this. Came back a long, long way from outside off stump. Greg Ritchie had his sights on it to punch it away there through cover point. But Australia now three for 126. Three for 129. The not out batsman, Hughes, eight off nine balls, border two off the four balls he's faced. And Dad placing his field with great care and precision. He's done a good job, man, Dad. into Wazimbari's face there, I think. Well, Ijaz is only an off-spinner. Doesn't come through all that quickly, but uh, it took Wazimbari under the jaw, I think. Like an uppercut. It might have just come off Hughes's pad. The sort of thing that the wicketkeeper hates, the deflection off the pad upwards into the face. Oh, dear. All right, Wazimbari's OK. His Hughes and Ijaz to bowl. Well, nicely placed. Beat the fellow rushing in to save the single. Oh, well, now there is uh, one brilliant piece of cricket from Kim Hughes, who placed that ball past the fellow rushing in from square leg, and then a series of little comedies. And here it begins. Good stroke. Fieldsman dashing in, overruns the ball, has to retreat, pick it up. Meanwhile, the batsmen are in the middle of the wicket. They weren't talking to one another. They want to go again. Now, it's third option. Wasimbari falls over. And Hughes has gone. It's good delivery, that. That spun a lot. It looped into the breeze, dropped sharply on Hughes, and then it spun a great deal. Well, Wasimbari comes back after that blow to the chin. He gets up off the canvas as Hughes gives Ijaz a charge. The ball spins between bat and pad, and Wasimbari still retains his composure in spite of that nasty knock and has to come a long way forward to the stumps, but Hughes is so far down the wicket, he's easily out. Four for one through five. Wayne Phillips takes strike. Abdul Qadir is bowling. That's very, very good running and terrible fielding. They've got three out of that. And the ball just went behind square leg. And they were looking for a fourth. That's chaos out there. Javid Men Dad is saying, what the hell's going on? Or words to that effect.
Two more to Bordeaux. is getting on to the Australians now. They've lost five wickets and we're only into the 39th over. A sacrifice there of Alan Border's wicket. It could have happened before this. Phillips three quarters of the way down the wicket and Border still undecided and uh, Border just came home as a matter of formality. Head down, tail down and he's also back in the pavilion. Five for one, four, five. Played away forcefully to mid wicket. Getting back to the second and a good throw right over the top of the stumps. <laughs> going away down to fine leg. And Phillips is flying, so is Dean Jones. And across for three. Responsibility on these two young Dean Jones playing his first international match and Wayne Phillips batting out here in front of his home crowd. He'd uh, be trying to rectify that nasty run out which he was largely responsible for. He's bowled him. Podessa has rolled Wayne Phillips over. It may have been that he got a little inside edge there, dragged the ball back, but Phillips looking to drive down the ground and he's out bowled by Modessa. And it hasn't been a good series for Wayne Phillips. Opened up in the first couple of World Series Cup matches and then dragging that one back with a good, healthy inside edge. And Madassa, who's bowled very well in the limited over matches, breaks through. So Wayne Phillips out for 17 off 21 deliveries in Australia, 6 for 163. Tom Hogan faces Madassa. Oh, he smashed that. It's going high and down towards the man underneath it. EJ's there. He's caught it. Good catch. No, it's not. It's Roger. Very good catch. That one swinging away from him. And Roger eventually catching it away from his body. About five or six yards short of the deep mid-wicket boundary. And Medessa once again picking up another vital wicket. Good catch out there by Raja. Nelly got away from him. He extended himself right at the very last moment. And he caught it safely. Certainly relieved was in Raja. Tom Hogan out in Australia, 7 for 169. Jones, 9 of 18 balls. He's uh, scoring a run every two balls. Maguire with him. Oh, he's hit that. What a beautiful shot that was. Down the wicket he went, hit through the line of the ball, and he fairly smashed it through the shins of uh, Kadir, I think it is, at Midorf. Lovely shot. It's nearly the shot of the day. That one hit right in the middle of the bat. Beautiful shot. A bit of a bad bounce down there for Kadir, but he wasn't too keen to get behind it. John Maguire faces Rashid Khan. That's out. Straight to mid-wicket. That one hit very firmly. And Maguire out. Caught Mansour Akhtar at mid-wicket there. A very firmly played whip to mid-wicket. This Australian innings now falling away dramatically. John Maguire holding out to mid-wicket. And Rashid, his first success of the day. He's bowled very economically, picking up the wicket of John Maguire. So Rashid, immaculate figures, one for 16 from nine overs. Maguire out for one, Australia 879. shot the man at fine leg is very square and he's having to move a long way around and that's into the boundary very good placement there by Dean Jones and Vassal just straying onto the leg stump and delicately played by the youngster oh good shot he's hit that up on, on the up through extra cover but it's going down to the really long boundary and so They'll have to settle for three. Yeah. 
Jones once again finding the gap in the outfield. A very bad piece of fielding. Almost crossed uh, Pakistan a boundary there. Salim running not in a straight line, but running in from the boundary. Almost missed that. So Pakistan will have to keep their run rate moving along and win the match today. Once again, Jones has found the gap and he'll bring up another boundary, his third. That was beautifully played. He charged. It was short. He flipped it back to the square, rolled the wrist and hit that beautifully. And Dean Jones winning a lot of fence here at the Adelaide Oval. Nadasa bowling the last over. Jones lofting onto the onside and once again he's found the gap. And that's his fourth boundary. Now played Dean Jones. Very strong on the onside as he is on the offside when driving, but he ripped that away nicely and not only did he hit it well, but he placed it. That brings up to 200 for Australia. And Jones here playing very sensible. Scoring over run per ball face, and that's very important. 19 runs have come in the last two overs. And a fine shot from Jones as he goes over the top of mid-off. They'll be looking to run at least three. Rosen gets the ball back in pretty smartly. Three it is, and a very good flurry at the end there from Dean Jones. He remains not out 40. Hogg not out six. 13 extras. And Australia 8 for 210 at the end of their 50 overs. Well, in the end, that turned out very well for the Australians, mainly due to that fine little innings by Dean Jones right at the end. 40. In uh, just 33 balls faced, a tremendous effort from a young man playing in his first international game. The rest of the card for Australia was uh, a mixed affair. Vessels did well up the top in the end, and Steve Smith, as his partner, finally battled through, and their opening stand paved the way for the later batsmen to do pretty well. Dean Jones came in right at the end, and the Pakistan bowlers must have thought at one stage they were going to dismiss them for fewer than 200 runs. The best of the bowlers was Ijaz Faki with four wickets, and Madassa Nazar picked up two. We pick up play now in the second over. Rackerman is coming into bowl to Javed Meandad. Your commentators, Tony Gregg and Keith Stackpole. Well, that's a beautiful shot. A little bit short there, that ball from Rackerman, and Javed Meandad leaning back, dispatching it over mid-wicket for four. That's a great lesson, Tony, how one should play in these early overs. Javid picked up the length beautifully. He's back onto the back foot. And with the field all up, apart from the two men out, a perfectly safe shot. Oh, and another good shot by Javid. That time, flipping it away off his pads. And Tom Hogan, the fieldsman there. And so, real sense of urgency out there. Nicely played again into the gap, and will they come back for the second? Yes, they'll have to be quick. Kim Hughes, the fieldsman at mid-wicket. That's beautifully played away, just to the left hand there of the backward square leg. But that ball flying off the middle of the bat. No wicket for 14, Carl Rackerman again. That one hits straight down the ground, over the top. Beautiful shot by Javid Meandad. These are very interesting tactics by the Pakistanis. All the fieldsmen have to be up bar two, and we have a third man in fine leg, so there's a lot of vacant space, space back down the ground. Some excellent performances turned in by Rodney Hogg in this World Series Cup. Oh, well played. That one hit straight through mid-wicket there, and the ball rolling away down towards the boundary. Four more. Well, they're certainly attacking the Australian bowlers. And that one smashed away a square as well. I didn't pick it up for a minute. He hit it really firmly, smashed it away for four. Beautiful shot by Javid Meandad. No wicket for 27. Both batsmen on 14. 
Oh, beautiful shot. Mansour smashing that one away through extra cover. Javid, the man there, smashing that one through extra cover for four. Short delivery by Maguire. That's bad bowling and driving me and Dad dispatching that with all the ease in the world. The square leg for four. So Rodney Hogg again. And saw down the wicket to him, smashes him through mid off. What a shot! Well, Rodney Hogg getting some punishment here. The ball rolling slowly down towards the boundary. Four more to the Pakistanis. Oh, good shot. There's no one out there. That'll be one bounce four. Good shot by Javid Meandad. The ball once again just a little short and Maguire there paying the penalty. And we've said over the last three days that this is a good batting wicket. And for the greater part of the three days, the batsmen have struggled, but not at the moment because it's Pakistan in full flight. Oh, and that one smashed away down to fine leg. Ball bobbing around there and Javid Meandad coming back for the second. It's a little difficult for Rodney Hogg. Nice to bounce for him. So 28 runs. Great strike rate that. Oh, and that's hit away down to the square leg boundary for four. Well, Kim Hughes beginning to feel the pinch out there. One of the reasons he's got a problem is Lawson's not playing. But Meandad really is turning it on and the 50 now up for Pakistan. Oh, and this one hits straight down the ground. He didn't really middle it, but the fieldsmen have got to be inside the circle there, so anything that clears the circle by any distance at all is going to be safe. 13 runs of that over. Pakistan cruising at no wicket for 54. Sensible cricket there from Mansour. Realises that Javid is uh, going along very nicely and just looking to push the ball around, play safely, make sure he doesn't get out. But he didn't miss the opportunity to get back for a second run. Pakistan 8.2. In that 56 runs, they've hit 10 boundaries. And boundaries have been as scarce as hen's teeth over the last two days. It's great to see. Javid, me and Dad leading from the front. Rather silly shot there from Mansur. Didn't really need to do that. But I guess uh, if you're going to be aggressive, it is very hard to uh, stop the flow of adrenaline. There's Hogg keeping the ball up at the stumps. And Rodney Hogg with a great strike rate this series. Was always at the stumps. Hit middle peg. Mansur out for a very valuable and quick scoring 22. Pakistan. Rackerman bowls to Shavid Meandad. It's high in the air. Tom Hogan going back and a very good catch. Well taken. A brilliant catch running the same way as the ball. The catch of the season, Tom Hogan. Javid Meandad on fire. It took a brilliant catch from Hogan. He went to pull it over mid wicket. He got high on the spice of the bat. And Hogan took a great catch running with the fight of the ball into that southerly breeze where the ball was going. And it hung up long enough for Hogan to take a beauty. Javid out for 34. It's two for 58. Well, Javid is going the whole way with his policy of aggression. Wasim Raja, the left-hander, comes in at number four. They say fortune favours the brave. 
certainly did on that occasion. Kazim on two. Wazim Raja yet to get off the mark. Two for 58. And a good catch there. Well, I suppose he is a catching man when he takes a catch. A very good effort there from Greg Ritchie. Yes, Kazim Omar working that ball to a backward square leg position and the man in the catching position, which we've been talking about, got a very forceful shot off the middle of the bat. And Kazim Omar departs and the wheels fall off for Pakistan. Three for 58. Rackerman to Madassa. Well taken there by his replacement, Wayne Phillips. A very, very good catch diving away down the leg side. And a tremendous catch, that leg side deflection. And Phillips in the air, caught it with both hands, clear as a whistle. And Pakistan slumped to four for six to get a beautiful catch. It was whipped fine. And Phillips across, took a clean and a good dismissal for Carl Rackerman, who has struck three times. And that's out for one, four for 60. Quiet to motion Khan. Nice deflection. Coming back for the second, I have to go quickly. It's the over four runs conceded. It's four for 73. Tom Hogan. Deflection off a bit of pad there from Mosin. Two runs. Buys. No deflection at all. Dived away, well fielded. Still managed to get two. Richie doing the fielding there. That may well have gone for four had he not got a hand to it. Richie diving away and cutting that one off. Kepler Vessels to Wazim Raja. Little nudge past the vacant soup cordon. Uh, Wazim Raja. Should run four, surely. Yes, and Wazim comes back for the fourth. All run. A little bit of deflection, a nice little nudge, that one. Four for 96, chasing 211 for victory. Ball played away to square leg, quite middle it, but they'll get two. He's gone. One attacking shot he makes, he drives it straight to can use a cover and Kepler Vessel strikes and it's another wicket fallen and Pakistan going down the drain in the Benson Hedges World Series Cup suit competition. Danced down the wicket to Kepler Vessels, didn't get hold of it at all. As he decided to have a go, hit it over the offside field but hit it straight to Kim Hughes. And Wazir Raja would be pretty disappointed with his contribution to this match. He normally is a big hitter. That is 17 runs in 66 balls. That's not too good at all. Pakistan, 5 for 98. Salim comes to the crease with his side in trouble at 5 for 98. It's high in the air. A little fall safe away from... It feels like a deep backward square leg, Rodney Hogg. As Ian Chappell mentioned, a very good spell of bowling by Tom Hogan. None for 12 from his eight overs so far. Had a little bit in direct contrast to his last appearance for Australia. He was over here at the Adelaide Oval. 37 overs he sent down in the test match. And Pakistan compiled that big score, Mosin getting a big 100. He got one for 107 on that occasion. Good shot there from Salim, waiting for the ball to turn. And just going with it, guiding it down to third man. Who 
Doesn't look like he's a man who made 200s in the Test Series. It's amazing how a batsman's form can desert him. And he's fighting here to try and get a little bit of that touch back. Well, that's got to be close, yes. Umpire Stephen Randall says it's out. It was always pretty straight. Rosen threw his head back when he was given out, but I don't think there was much doubt about that one. Playing right across the line. The ball seemed to hurry off just a little bit quicker. And catching Mosen right in front. Playing just across it. Wayne Phillips and Kepler Vessels, a very confident appeal. So Kepler Vessels does it once again, picking up his second wicket. Mosen Khan out for 19 off 61 deliveries, and Pakistan now 6 for 115. Comparisons after 35 overs. Australia well in front in runs and in wickets. 3 for 126, 6 for 115. And the run rate required from here on in, 6.4 from Pakistan. Well flighted delivery there by Hogan, beating both batsman and keeper. It's an ideal breeze to bowl into from the spinner down at that far end. Nice flight, bit of turn and just bouncing over the top of the stumps. And it's almost taken by Kepler Vessels as Salim missed times that attempted shot off the back foot. Kepler Vessels normally a very safe pair of hands and he'd be disappointed if he let this one get away, particularly off his own bowling. This time they get the single. Any spinner that can bowl 10 overs and average just around about two runs and over. It's been a very good piece of bowling. Wickets taken, not always the guide to a bowler's performance. And this is certainly not the case in Tom Hogan because he hasn't picked up a wicket. And there's an appeal there and that's close as well. Yes, Peter McConnell agrees with Tom Hogan and Wayne Phillips who gave a tremendous shout when that ball hit Salim on the pads. And a just way to finish off his bowling stint. Picking up a wicket with his very last ball, a ball that pitched in line with the middle and leg stump, just turned back fractionally. The batsman hit right in line. So Tom Hogan, the end of an excellent spell of bowling. One for 22 off, 10 overs, and Salim out for 14. And Pakistan now struggling at seven for 123. They've only got three wickets in hand. Good shot from Ijaz. Border will just cut it off though. He's very quick around the boundary. And a very strong throwing arm. And Australia doing it well now. Seven for 137 from 43. So the rate really is high required by Pakistan at the moment. What a turnabout after the way they started off. Some excellent bowling figures there. Tom Hogan has turned in an outstanding performance. We've said a couple of times how well each has bowled and Abu Kadir on other occasions. Hogan today was quite superb. And Hogg has slipped through now. Pakistan had to get cracking. Abdul Kadir is gone. It's 8 for 137. And Australia not far away from the finals. Yes, uh, this is certainly the last tail at the nail in the Pakistan coffin. Right across the line, the ball hitting middle and off. Abdul Kadir comprehensively bowled by the first ball of uh, Rodney Hogg's new spell. So Pakistan now in all sorts of trouble. Eight down for 137. Rackerman to Ijaz. Oh, well done. Well caught and well bowled by Rackerman. Ijaz goes. That was a good delivery from Kyle Rackerman. Neatly taken by Phillips. Nothing outstanding about the catch, but he gloved it well. Beautifully bowled by Rackerman. Yes, Kyle Rackerman certainly has bowled well in this match as well. A little bit of movement away off the seam there, an outside edge, and the catch taken 
by Wayne Phillips. Hinkerman was spot on in terms of his length and line. And as a result, he's rewarded by yet another wicket. EJ is out for 13. Pakistan, 9 for 137. Forty the sad tale for Pakistan. Top score still Javed Miandad with 34. And that's it. The end of the innings and the end of the match. And victory for, uh, for Australia by 70 runs. They're into the finals now against the West Indies, irrespective of what happens to them in the Perth weekend. Well, that was a splendid effort from the Australians in the end. The way Pakistan started off, I thought they really were going to get those 211 runs in the space of just 30 or 32 overs to keep up the run rate and make a big challenge for Australia in Perth. The Pakistan card, top score there, Javed Meandad, 34, and the rest fell away for the total of 140. And the bowling figures, Rackerman, 5 for 16. My word, he must have gone very close to the player of the match. And a splendid performance there from Tom Hogan, 1 for 22. We've often said how well Abdul Qadir and each has a bowl. Well, Tom Hogan out bowled them here today at the Adelaide Oval. A crowd of 22,758. And the points table in World Series Cup. The West Indies are on 14. Australia on 9. Pakistan 3. And man of the match, well, it wasn't Carl Rackerman. That uh, little pleasure today went to the all-rounder Kepler Vessels. And uh, he made runs and bowled extremely well once again. So the matches now move on to Perth next weekend. A double header. There's no significance in them as far as uh, the finals are concerned because the finals now consist of West Indies and Australia. But there'll be plenty of competition in the matches themselves for the financial reward and the confidence booster for Australia if they can only down the West Indies in Perth. We look forward to having you with us in those matches. Good night.